All right, here we go. <laughs> Always fun starting these things. I feel like, I don't know, something. Also, I should look up there, right? I got to get better at looking at the camera. Other thing I need to do is build a um, something where I can see when people subscribe or um, Twitch show when someone follows. In general, whether service alerts you for followers and other alerts should also have a dashboard. I, mean, I guess I could do that, see if there's a stream dashboard. But I, like, I don't want to see... So I don't want to see the number of people watching. And also, I want like an alert, like a pop-up. Yeah, I'll have to build something. Also, like a message to pop up in your chat. Thank you, follower. In case you miss an on screen alert. Yeah, okay, I'll figure that out later. Whatever. This bot like Nightbot have an option somewhere that allows the bot to announce when someone follows you. What is Nightbot? I mean, I've seen it before, but it's like... Is that a Twitch thing, or...? Dashboard, class and customability, chat logs. I should look at this at some point. Because that probably does a whole bunch of stuff, right? That's why everybody uses it. Uh, oh, let me do this. No, that's cool. That's fine. Actually, yeah, let me restart. Oh, whoops. Get a gift bot going. Eh, yeah, whatever. Okay, so... Whatever, messing around. Oh, there's a checklist. Really should close that before I start. Not that it matters, but, you know, clean it up. Um, all right, so what are we doing? So the first thing I want to do is... I actually worked on some code this morning that I need to put in place. Let's also get the font size up here where you all can see it. 19 today. Whoa, 29. That would do it. Let's try 19. Um, so I ran into a problem with the downloader component of the little music video assembler where it kept bombing on this particular file and I was getting a memory error, which I don't think I've copied anywhere. Um, but apparently what's happening is I've discovered now that the file was 20 gigs and it was just running the computer out of memory before it could actually write it. Cause the. I'm using the request component of Python and request basically just loads everything into memory. And once it has the full file, then it writes it out. The machine that I'm on couldn't handle 20, a 20 gig file in memory. Like it just freaked it out. Um, the, I actually don't know how much memory is on that machine. Um, I'm guessing it's 32 gigs. Otherwise it would have bombed. Well, actually it could be 16 gigs. I'll bet it's 16 gigs. That's probably why it freaked out. Um, Cause it never made it to get the file. But what you can do is do it in chunks and download that way. And the funny thing for me is all the stuff that I've seen basically talking about like how to download files doesn't use the chunking method. But like, I'm gonna write this up because this is one of those where um, it's act, you're actually, it doesn't hurt you to use the chunking method. It takes a couple extra lines of code, but so what? 
and it works on big files too versus the other like the more straightforward method without using the chunking doesn't so like i'm just going to use this 100 percent of the time i guess i should straighten that thing up i forgot about that um i'm just going to use this 100 percent of the time because that way if i hit a big file it doesn't matter it'll just go um but what i need to do is for my NASA downloader, I need to actually drop that code in place. Save web file via temp. Right, so this does it if response is 200. Directory path, oh yeah, so this, I've got this other one set up too, to use a temporary path, there's also a Python module for temporary files. But as far as I can tell, it actually uses like the temp directory. I should really test it more. Um, oh, actually, I'm making that as an assumption. Um, let's actually look at that. Name temp file, temp file. Under Unix, a directory entity for the file is either not created at all or is removed immediately after it. Okay. I didn't know you could make a file on a Unix system and not have it show up. That's kind of crazy. Directory entry is not unlinked. Temporary directory, not helpful. Detour. Create the temporary directory in the most secure manner possible. Okay, great. Return the name of a directory used for temporary files. Ah, okay, this is what we want. Return the name of the directory used for temporary files. This defines the default value for all dir arguments to all functions. Python searches a standard list of directories to find one which the caller calling user can create files in. directory name by tempter temp or whatever right so on window yeah see i don't want to have the temp files written there because you could be writing across to a uh mounted platform like a different hard drive and i don't know well it probably handles it Surely that has to handle it. Where I'm, where I'm headed is if if you're using the temp file and then say it's a 20 gig file and then the temp file is being moved over to the new directory and it crashes in the middle, does it, is it partial? That seems unlikely though, right? I mean, surely it takes care of that. But I, but I don't know if like, if it just does a straight rename, well, you can't, you can't do a straight rename across volumes, right? Um, because it's the the bytes on one drive have to get moved over to the to the bytes on the other drive. Versus if you're just doing a rename, it's just a file pointer going back and forth between two different files or two different pointers going to the same bits. So that's got me spooked a little bit about this. Not that it, and like not that it's that big a deal, right? It, it's gonna almost certainly be okay almost all the time. But like, but I don't know that that's the case. And like, almost certainly it's fine. Oh, to create a temporary file using a context manager. Files now closed and removed. Create a temporary directory. Close the file and it will be removed. I 
I'm just gonna do it this way. Like, I'm gonna assume that rename works. Um, so where, so Scratchpad. So this is our new code. What we got going? We gotta find the right thing now. So we're just sending it a URL and a file pass. So we're sending it the same stuff. So this needs self to get here. And then it's doing the same thing where it's making the directory with request stream to raise status. This only makes the temp file if it does. Yeah, so this is instead of doing if status equals 200, this does raise for status. I don't really know which one of this is better or not, but this will be fine because like that'll if it if it doesn't hit a 200 or something, it'll explode. Then we make the temp file, which is just the file path with that temp behind it, right to that chunk, 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 and then rename it once it's done. So this becomes this, 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 this. So that should let me get to. Why is that angry? It's got the yellow line under it. Must maybe static. Still need to look that up. Uh, so that should let me get these bigger files coming down. Um, we will test that later. Where's GitHub? GitHub is right here. So that's a downloader. Update download. Update, save web file via temp to handle large files. Yeah, the one that I pulled down, the one that kept on causing the problem was 20 gig, um, which is kind of ridiculous. And like, I'm almost, I'm tempted to exclude it. because it's just a press conference, like they must have shot it in 4K. And also the footage sucks, like it was like handheld or something because it was it's jittery all over the place. So I should just exclude it, but I want to have that code in place anyways, because there may be other bigger files that are in there like that have really cool stuff in them. All right, so we'll move that over to the other PC or to the other machine and run it um this evening possibly this afternoon depends uh but now what we want to do and this is cool because i actually just saw that i left it there so we can close this i'm gonna leave scratch pad available nasa assembler what else did i have here? video assembler okay so that's this is video assembler is the first one video downloader let's close it for now Mass assembler. This is the one that that's we're actually working on. So this is the so video assembler did the download, the clipping or the sep the splitting, and then the assembly all together. I'm splitting that out into three separate uh, scripts. Downloading's done. Clipping's done. This is the assembler. Um, and so I left this in a failed state last night so that I could get back into it. Uh, with a specific, so like I've got a thing to focus on. I don't have to kind of wander around. So I know that what I want to do is I need to add. So I've got my, to the, the way that this is going to work is it loops over a bunch of MP3 files, gets the duration of that MP3 file or picks one, gets the duration of it, then goes and looks at clips and finds enough clips to give it to, to build the same amount of video for the duration of the mp3 file and it's going to create a string that's a concatenation a video concatenation string and then run that string which will make the video and then a final string that'll move it together with the audio and then output that as a thing um so the thing that i hadn't put in there yet was this clips this clip root so i'm sending this to the mp3 file 
And so we need to make sure that clip root is a thing that we've got. Clip root. All right, tester passing. Hooray, we're back in. Now I don't know what to do. All right, I'm going to walk all the way back through this for a second. So main, we don't have anything in there yet. Let's go. Actually, let's go ahead and build out main. Which I'm not sure if you're really supposed to do that or not. But So it's going to be def main. Uh, so from... NASA Assembler, NASA, actually, sorry, sometimes this, it's weird the way that these imports happen. Is that finding it? There we go. Like sometimes that dot works and sometimes it doesn't, depending. I don't know, it's kind of, kind of nuts. If name equals main. Uh, there's a way to do this that I can't remember. I think it's sys.exit. Which lets you, yeah, sys.exit and then main. Sys, exit, main, or zero. And so basically what that lets it do is if it explodes, it sends a non-zero message back, which lets other applications know that it crashed, that something bad happened. Um, so we need sys. I don't know why that if is, oh, because it's not, doesn't have anything in there. So na equals NASA assembler with our parens on it. And then we need to pass it a config and this is where, yeah, okay, we're gonna do this more the right way. I didn't really do this for the other ones, which is basically to say, this. So we're going to set the config path. And this is where it gets a little sketchy, right? Because we don't want to, I'm still looking for a better way to signify the difference between config and prod. And like, especially because it's going to be like, this stuff is going to get packaged, like also because this is potentially going to get packaged up and built as a script. So I don't have a good way to do that. Um, I'm still trying to figure that out. But this is this is what I'm doing right now. Um, so from pathlib, import path to fix that. our test directory. We want to go up here. Yeah, because really what I, I wish you could do was put a file in place for it that would let it know that it's prod. But because I'm testing on the same box that I'm that'll run on, potentially. If you use any full path, it's gonna be there regardless. Like as soon as you put it in for prod, it's gonna exist there for dev too. I still haven't gotten around that. The best I can come up with is doing this. Config dev JSON.
and then how about we do integration tests which is actually this is like smoke test So I'm going to be running this off of main, not off like an integration thing. Like this is going to be a legit test, right? MP3 files. Clip files. Outputs. Why did that just disappear? What just happened? Oh, I just closed the directory somehow. That was super weird. Or I don't know. I just zoned out there for a split second. I'm not sure what happened. So here's, and this is still structural stuff. Like I'm still trying to figure out what structure I want to have for these things. Um, yeah, see, this was using real pi. Yeah, so I was using pi fake fs, but you can, and with pi fake fs. You can put files wherever on the system because it's all a fake file system. Unfortunately, what you can't do is like call sub process to run an external command um, on stuff. It just doesn't work. And some other things like that just don't work because uh, they, they don't have access to the file system. Um, even if you, I guess if you paused it, I can't remember, but it just, it, it didn't work. So I'm actually having to go back and test on the file system because these things need to actually, I want I need to make sure that I'm reading enough an MP3 right. I need to make sure that the thing works. So I want the full smoke test going. Um, then I want the structure of the smoke test so that I've got something going. So config dev, so should be NA, by the way. NA, NA, load config, config path. And then where's my tests? Because I think all we're really going to do Yeah, we can get rid of that one. Integration, so we're pausing the that. Yeah, so load config and then assemble videos. This is the full thing. Why is that angry? Unexpected, oh, because it's this. And this would be NASA assembler. Yeah, I wish there was a better way to do this. This just feels a little fraught, fragile, brittle, whatever. Um, so if I run this, it should explode because there's no attempted relevant import with no known parent. Yeah, see? Yeah, no MP3 root.
Dev, NASA, Assembler, Coke Test, not the same thing. Maybe the files. Grab that directory here. And then output root. Outputs, clip root, clip files. All right, so that should now run. Properly enclosed up quotes and lines on the blah, 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 blah. Don't do that. Okay, and so that's not actually doing anything because it's not finding any any MP3 files. But I want this is the structure really that I wanted to see, um, is to make sure I've got the that core down there, and I've got it in my integration test. But this is like this is how the thing will run, um, and as we make progress on it, we can actually give it a shot. Uh, all right, so I'm going to close everything for a second so I can get back to where we're headed. So let's drop tests. So here's our MP3 file. So let me go back to the assembler. So simple videos for path and path. We're going to make, we're going to grab an MP3 here. And our MP3 file need to pass all those things to it. So let's go ahead and do that. MP3 file. And then you've got to pass all of these. So I guess we could do that. So for file and file list, that should be the file. Output root is going to be self output root. Clip root we don't have in here yet. Where's our test for NAS assembler? Let's just see if this is running. It's not. MP3 not defined. Okay, right. Does that work? Different error. Cannot import MP3 file for partially initialized module. Import error. Can I import name? Uh oh, I don't know how to do this in the test stuff. So I'm in NAS Assembler. I'm right next to it. Oh. Now we're passing. I was looking at the wrong file. I was thinking about the project, not the specific file. Oh, 
Okay, so now we need to get clip directory in here. Test NASA, where's load config? Load config. We've got clip root, okay. I'm not initializing that, we should do that. Let me pass this here. So we're making our MP3 file. So the quite and then the output path. Let's just see if we've got output path. We should. Yep, output root, hyperspeed MP4. Okay, yeah, so that gives us our input and our output. So now all we gotta do is do all the work in between there to make those things happen. Uh, and so the other thing I'm gonna do right now, so instead of hard coding this, where I'm just touching the file to, to do the pass, we'll do this. That's a little bit, I don't like that because I gotta make sure that I'm deleting it at the start of the test. And if that file path changes, then it would still be there or whatever. Um, make sure to delete this when the actual file is coming down. Won't super matter because you're just touching the file but we still don't want to leave it hanging out there. And this is where I like the fake FS stuff is because every test, it just builds the file system brand new. So it doesn't matter if you leave stuff hanging around. Um, but yeah, so in this integration, I'm looking for this test path, which is that path that we had and then removing it. Yeah, this isn't, I don't like this way of this test structure, but I don't have a better way to do it right now. Or I, I don't know of a better way to do it right now. So that's what we're gonna do. It works. Get explode. I just did the thing where I dented the can, so in a second it's gonna undent itself and throw. Cherry Coke Zero uh, across the world. All right, so we're on the MP3, so I've got the duration. Now this is where it gets tricky to test. Let me see how I did this. No, I don't want to look at the other one. I just want to I just want to run through it. Because what I need is so let's just make these things happen. Concat's command. So I need to make the concat command. Um, stuff ffmpeg this is not yeah t output 
Okay, this is what we were looking for. Which we will dramatically reduce in size. Keep going. We're gonna take that out for right now. We want quotes around it. So this has what? So output root. Output mp4. And then these will be clip root. This is a very long thing. Here, let's actually cut this down. Ah, uh, don't do that. Those should be happy now. Why aren't they happy? Two free arguments for format string. What do you mean? There's three of them. Except there's not, because there's not common in there. Now there's three. Yay for syntax catching. So that's gonna be this and this, this and this. Just make sure our test is working here. Let's fail it. All right, it's working. So for for one MP3 file, there's going to be one concat command and one audio to assembly command. Oh, we're going to need. No, we already know. Yeah, we've got all. Okay, that's everything. Also, I should stay focused on the task at hand, so cool. So MP3 concat command. So this is going to fail because that doesn't exist. So now it'll pass. Hey, Bob, what's up? How you doing this fine day? Going good over here. Redoing my uh, this little part of my crazy assembly thing to see uh, to see if we can get that working. So concat command. This is it's it's tough because like there's all this randomness involved in it. Um. And I've done it once before, but actually I, I could go look at that code, but I'm going to try and see if I can, well, I'm going to do it again this way to figure it out again. Oh, that's cool. What's the, uh, what's the app? Export and import code for free on like uh, Webflow or Sync. I actually don't know Webflow or Sync. Design build launch. Responsive web design tools. Why don't this go over here? Like over there. Let's 
sank. I don't know Sank. Where's Sank? Oh, Sank Design? No, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> How you doing there? <laughs> it sank off. Sank one. Sank oof. I'm still not sure where I'm going. <laughs> hey, hello, Ringo. How's it going? Sank not one? Sank. No. No sank. Not a web dev. No sank. Not web V designer. Not a web designer. Oh, okay. I gotcha. So, Webflow. Yeah, I've never seen this before. Is it just kind of like GUI make websites? By the way, Ringo, how's it going? Having a good uh, Monday? May you have it off? Uh, cool. I'll have a look at that. You can export code. Oh, you can export code, but you got to pay. I gotcha. So they let you design it, but then to get your stuff out of it, to put it somewhere, they charge you money. Oh, yeah, I, uh, I managed to get this week off, even though I have one conference call today, two tomorrow and possibly two on Wednesday. So off, but, uh, so I got one of them working, um, the, the downloader and the assembler, or sorry, the downloader and the splitter are working. The splitter actually had to stop it because it was hogging CPU. Um, and then this is the assembler. So I'm in the middle of getting it uh, going. But it's kind of, it's tough to test because there's like randomness involved in it. And that was hard for me to get my head around the first time. Uh, I'm not going back and looking at that code. I want to see if, I want to see what approach I take this time. So this is going to be really kind of bumpy. So strap in. I just hit the mic. Sorry about that. Let's see what Bob's got here. Oh, went to the wrong place. My chat window is in a different browser. Download web designer. Great. Oh, I've never seen this before. Web is Google Web Designer. I've never seen this. Timelines, no less. Okay, that's pretty interesting. That's really interesting. Events, flexible. And yeah, so you just get your code. Like, they just give it to you, right? Here, download it. I'm cool with this. Uh, sure. Agree and download. Let's do it. You already have all my information anyways. What's it going to hurt? Oh, throw your own stuff in it. Nice. I'll definitely play around with that. That looks like the timeline stuff looks super interesting. Um, uh, I'm messing around with React right now a little bit too, trying to get my head around it. I, well, I've just looked at it for the first time, like last week. Um, all right, so we got this going. And so this is just a hard-coded test pass. Now we can actually figure out how to make this thing go, which is where things, this this is where it's gonna get rough and bumpy. Um, so I'm just gonna pick the part, the pieces that I can do pretty easily. Uh, so we've got our output root. And we've got our output path. So we're so output path is easy. So this becomes output path. Uh 
Oh, but it needs to be, that's, this will be fine for right now. I actually need to do two different things. Why did that explode? That should not have exploded. Oh, because we're passing it a different name. We're calling it hyperspeed. There we go. Test passing. Okay. Um, yeah, React's a web dev framework. Uh, I think it's a framework. Um, it lets you build websites uh, and single page applications. I've, I've read six chapters of a book about it that are short, short chapters. So um, I don't know that much about it yet, but it's JavaScript and JSX, JavaScript XML stuff, which it sounds like it invented. Um, uh, on React, uh, I'm not sure. Oops. Uh, get started. Try React, learn React, playgrounds. That is an exercise left to the reader. You can let me know. Um, it's a no. Oh, it's a Node package. You got to install it with Node. I'll let you dig into that. They don't make it super clear on the start. It's kind of a bummer. It seems like that would be the first thing you do. It's like, here, do this to install. Um, is that music too loud? Sounds loud to me. There we go. Whatever. Okay, so we got we got our first part. So now what we need to do, and this is where it gets weird, is I've got a duration, and I need to go look at that duration for the the length of the MP3 file, and then go get clips. Oh, you know the other thing I need to do. Hang on. Um, I'm doing the clips slightly differently now. So the clips this time, so there's all the clips, but I've got these scenes. So this is really what I need to have. Let me put this in place because I don't actually need, this time I don't need the actual MP4 files. Uh, last time I was going through and I would look at an MP4 file and grab the duration from it with a tool called EXIF tool. This time what I've done is I've output the spreadsheet which will make more sense in a second, where it has start and end times of all the different scenes. So I can use, I can just grab my duration times from that. Um, so we'll start with that. I'm gonna put a couple of those in place. Uh, let me find those. So this is the assembler. Tests, clip root. So I'm just, not going to name these things the same thing. We're going to call this 1-1. One, one. I want the same structure. Um, uh, so basically the structure is I hash the file names or the URLs to get this OB whatever and then I but I put them in to the first two characters to use as directory names because there's like 5,000 of these files and you don't want that many in a single directory. Um, so I'm just using the first two characters to give me some separation there. So there's that. We're going to grab this file. Whoops. Put you here. And rename. I don't think the part of it matters, but we're going to give it the 1-1. One, one. And then grab this one. Oh, yeah. This one didn't split into scenes. Uh... I don't want to use that one yet. Copy this one. And we'll just put this one in 2 2. Okay, so there are files. So that actually gives us a little something to test with, which is getting our durations. Test, get 
durations for video. It's funny, if I was doing this procedurally, it would be it'd be easier for me to get my head around um, without the tests on it. Uh, how do I download? Also sounds like a good way to learn JS. I wouldn't use React to learn JS um, or JavaScript, whatever. I'd probably stick to just learning some JavaScript stuff independently because React's JavaScript mushes HTML slash XML into it. And that would be another hurdle to get over um, that you, that's probably not worth the effort. Like it would take you way longer to get your head around that than if you just get JS and JavaScript and then you just move into React after that. Uh, and yeah, I think you do need to install Node to do React. You are, hey, might as well spell durations, right? So, What do we want to see out of this? And is it worth doing? I can't get my I can't get my head around how to do this. Sorry, I can. I'm just having trouble right now. Be positive. Um I mean, you can get React and play around with it, but if your goal is to learn JavaScript, that's probably not the right way to do it. But you can you can learn React if you want to try and do that. I don't know enough about React to tell you a good answer on that, to tell you the truth. Um, it may be fine learning it on its own. Uh, you got Node? Okay, yeah. And it's, I think it's... I don't know. I, I don't have enough experience to tell you. Um... See, I can't figure out how, oh yeah, so here, test clip root, clip root, 11, table editor. So here's, there's a plugin for Py, PyCharm that I love here that shows you the CSV files. So what I need to do, is I need to randomly pick a video, or I need to randomly pick a directory and then inside that directory, I need to randomly pick a row. But like, how do you test that? Well, so you could, okay, so I am kind of remembering this a little bit. So you could split, you could split the randomness to its own thing. I'm trying to remember how I did this, but this is a good, this is a good brain exercise to kind of like retry and figure it out and and push on it until I kind of get it. Uh, yeah, React's a framework that you make apps with. Um, but I think people call it a React, people will say React app, but I think they mean that the thing that they made was an app built on React. So get duration for clip. Let's do this. And then we're going to pass it what would be the randomness of things. Um, so expected equals, what are we going to hit? How about we're going to hit something here? And I got to figure out, so I don't length in seconds would be our duration. So let's do three, one oh three. or 3.013, right? Nope. 103 it is. self so cert equal expected actual 
Just make sure it runs. Throw something else at it, make sure it breaks. Okay, so now we got a solid test. And then MP3 get duration for clip. Okay, this is the way to do it. And then we say video ID equals 11 scene ID equals whichever one this was. Oops. 30. I don't know why I just did that or that or that. We'll pass it as a string for right now. Yeah, it is gonna be a string. Oh, you're only 15? All right, yeah, but doing stuff already? That's perfect. That's great. That's a perfect time to start. It's all about learning new stuff. Like, you just keep, like, it's a constant uh, iteration of learning new things. Like, I'm just now learning React. Um, and once you get your first language or two underneath your belt, it's a lot easier to keep learning. Uh, or to learn new things, because you kind of have a, a framework to associate things with. Def, get clip, duration. You are a T, okay, yeah, yeah, let's spell it right. I spelled it twice the same way wrong. Wrong the same way twice. Whatever that word is. Um, I just want to do this. So I want to make sure this is talking. Oh, it's not going to talk yet. We got to add those in. So we need to expect a video ID. So I'll, I'll apply the randomness externally and then I'll call these things directly. So that's how we can, that's yeah. That's how you actually split out the random aspect of this. Um, or do we want to do, no, I don't want an ID. I want a path. Let's change this up. Seamless path, I guess. I'm kind of all over the place right now, but we'll settle down here in a second. Um, so that's going to be clips path, clip root. See all this stuff. I just, I don't know about all this hard coding stuff. Clip root 11. Cause what we're going to do is we're just going to glob all this stuff to grab it. Uh, splitter. No, assembler. Tests. 11. So I'm just going to have all these paths. I'm going to have a list of all these CSV files. I'm just going to randomly pick one of them. And then, oh, you've got to read. Oh, that's okay. We'll get, we'll get to it. Because you've got to you got to know before I can create the scene ID, I've got to know how many scenes are available, right? All right, so let's get back to green here real quick. Okay, so that's green. But when I do this, it's going to break because I'm actually assigning it back into actual, which right now I'm not returning the right thing. But when I do this, there's green. Okay. So now we just need to figure out how to get th that. Okay, this is, okay. I got my head around this part of it at least. That didn't take nearly as long as last time. Last time I was struggling with that a ton. Uh, set up the draft for fiber. Well, 
What flows the coast of state Gmail? Oh, okay, I gotcha. Yeah, JavaScript, yeah, you're gonna wanna pick up JavaScript. That's just like the way of the world these days. Um and and stay up on that. Like you I would get the foundation and the fundamentals of JavaScript down. Um because from that you can it's a it's a fine first language to learn. And it's also what powers the web these days. Or forever. Until something new comes up. Uh but yeah, that's I, I would spend time digging into JavaScript and get that under your belt pretty solid, like the fundamentals. And that'll open up all kinds of stuff for you. All right, so with open, our scene path list in read as scene file. Okay, I think I can do this math. Um, scene reader equals CSV reader scene file. And then, all right, I need to look at that CSV file because I think we can target directly to this, like the structure of these, CS of these CSV files is always the same because it's coming from the same output or from the same thing. So I want to get to the 30 second, re oh, this is perfect. I love this. This little app or this little plugin is great. Because normally you look at it like this and you're like, what the hell? And you got to throw it to Excel. This is great. So I need to get to the 32nd row and the 10th column. So, so I know how to do this one way. I'm going to do it the way that I know. Uh, pi CSV pick specific row. I don't think I've got that. Oh, here, look at this. That's my exact question. Oh, Photoshop to HTML. Yeah, Photoshop may have some stuff. You usually don't want to just export an image. Um, oh, pandas, I could use pandas. We're gonna use pandas. Uh, pip, install pandas. Also, we don't have a setup file here. Eh, I'm just running this as a script anyways. Except we wanna have a setup file. Set up pi pandas. Requests, I can't remember what else I'm using right now, but that's fine. All right, let me relook at this. So yeah, so we're just gonna import this up top. So that gives us pandas, which is like data frames and all this other stuff that I totally don't kind of understand. Um, but it basically gives you really nice, easy access to stuff, especially when you figure out that you're in the wrong file. I think I just totally put pandas in the wrong file too. Yep, I did. Let's go ahead and move that right back over here. Uh, fine, right here. Go for it. And then right here, 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 get duration for clip. So here's where we're going to put in a data frame call. And then I don't remember if this is zero indexed or not. Uh, we're just going to take a shot at it and see what happens. Duration. See, I did it. I got it out of that C again. 
really like that C in there. Duration. All right, let me count this out real quick. So 30, 30, 3210 is probably going to be 319. That is not the right thing to type on. I keep thinking this is an external file or an external. 3919. And then we got to cast it to a float. Is that how you do that? All right, here, we're just going to fire it up, see what happens. We're going to run the wrong script. Oh, no, it blowed. It blowed? It's like it blowed up. Ah! I should actually give it a path. Failed. 4.3. Okay, so we got something. 4.338. Where'd we go? Okay, so we're off by one. Oh, because there's header rows. There's two header rows. So if we back that off by one and run, we still miss it. Could not convert string to float. Oh, whoops. I know what we did. We backed off the wrong one. This should be nine. This should be 30. Oh, that's actually fantastic because that's the number that we're passing in. We're passing in 30 and it gives us 32 and it's perfect. So we don't have to do any math. We can just call it straight in. So again, I did the wrong thing. So if we take this and put that right there. Nope. I lied. It's probably because it's a string. See if we make it an int. Test passed. There you go. All right, so that's how we get that. That's slick. I like it. Make a do this for your website so you can try to stay more on task. Yeah. All right, cool. See you. Be right back. Or you will be right back. We'll be right here uh, for a little while. I think Mike calls at 5 o'clock. I should check that. Okay, so there's the duration for the clip. How? So. And this is also where I get a little bit lost on this in terms of how to, to make these tests. because there has to be a randomness going into it. So I can find that number though, that's that's good. I can find that. All right, I think I'm just going to try and start writing this. I don't know what to test. Um, where did that concat command go? So let's do this. Self. See, how do you, it's the random that keeps throwing it in. Um, Cause I need to make this a list. And I want that to be an instance variable so you can just do like splat it out. And I need to populate that instance variable. Yeah, so we're going to create the MP3. I'm 
back up for a second. And then we're gonna do, so we're gonna, I'm gonna stub this out. Um, it's gonna be MP3. Build commands. All right, here, let's do it one at a time. Build, or do we actually, no, 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 no. See, we just wanna call it mp3 file and it's gonna be make mp4 file make video which, so we've got the output path. Where's my test here? Do I have an integration test on this? I don't. Get durations for clip, concat, test output. Oh, this one is not easy to test. Test integration. So we've got everything loaded. And then we're gonna run MP3 make video. So that's gonna blow up. Why did that blow up? That should have blown up. There it goes. So def make video, there we go. And then we're just gonna pass it right now. So get passing. And then self assert true. OS path, wait, how do you check if a file exists? Hi, file exists. I'll check if a file exists. Path is file. Okay. Oops. By the way. From pathlib import path. I think you can, I think there's a way to do it with OS too. Path. See, this is where it sucks that I have to use the same, all the same stuff. Is file. Trick, of course, is that file may already exist. So try. OS remove. Here, let's put this in. A variable for us. Output file equals that. Try remove. Output file. Accept. OS error. Pass. We'll just kick it. Like, I don't care. And then now this should fail because that doesn't exist. See, this was what sucks about having to do it on the real file system. Also, OS is not defined, so we'll fix that. Now let's see if it fails for the right reason. False is not true, okay, good. And so now let's just touch that file. And the other thing is like we're hard coded into all these directories, like, well, I guess I don't have to use full file paths, but I'm already there, so whatever, we're gonna do it. Um, path, file path, dot touch. Hmm. 
from pathlib import path. Okay. Run it. Passing. Okay, yeah. So we're just we're just touching the file to just make it. So that's but this is make video. And we're only gonna do yeah, so there's only one MP3 file and then we're gonna make the video. So we've got that. Oh, also, we should be able to do this. Where is output path? We should be able to do this. Self output path go. Okay, there we go. So we're, yeah, so we've got our path. Okay, so that's where we're gonna make these calls happen. Oh yeah, shoot, uh, shoot me the question. That's fine. I can go back and forth. It's all good. I, I'll focus for a while, then I'll talk for a while. Like it's all good. Um. All right, so we got. Whoops, it doesn't go anywhere. Why does my login button disappear when the script was added? We're gonna log in from a Discord server, but I'm struggling with Node.js a lot. Here are my problems in code. Well, my button disappears when I add this. Fragment access, fragment has access token, URL state, state parameter, decode URI, say, yeah, this is what, I'm not even sure what you're using. Is this just straight JavaScript? Constant state local storage, get item and state parameter. Fragment. Has access token. Local storage, get item and state parameter. If state parameter is not equal to, I don't know what a tube is. Decode URL component, or URI component, URL state. You may have been clicked. Prior HTTP. I don't know. I don't know what FS is. Ports. You say you're running on fifty five hundred. So yeah. This is OAuth two Node.js. Copied and pasted from there. Okay. Uh, Change it a bit. Um, yeah, I don't have enough grounding in this to tell you. I don't see anything that sticks out, obviously, to me. But I don't have enough grounding in it to to know if there's something if there's something there. Yeah. I I'm afraid I can't help right now. I don't know it. Yeah, I don't know why that would do. That. It doesn't seem like that should affect anything, but I, that, again, like that's not that's not my not my realm. <laughs> yeah, after adding the top code, um, fragment access token, fragment your state. Yeah, I don't know enough about it. I wish I could help, but that is beyond my ken, as they say. Cool. Yep. See ya. Just be here hacking a little bit. All right. So we're going to make the video, right? So here's the, this is the call that does the thing. And so we take the input, we make the output. And I'm just going to stub this all the way out. Just so I know what the, just so I have an idea what the pieces are. Um, I think maybe I'm not sure. Um, Because we know we need the duration of the MP3 file. We got that. Concat command. All right, so let's just let's just run this, and it'll just be like this. Will just be kind of behind the scenes and in, in you know implementation detail. Um. So CSV list is gonna be, uh, I need glob. It's not bad. So 
See me. Glob, import glob, right? Is how we do globs. So CSV list is going to be glob.glob. .glob. Clip root. In an F string with star star dot CSV pi glob recursive. Just recursive equals true. Okay. So let's just put this right here and see what we got. Um, I'm gonna close this for now. We're pretty happy with that. Pretty happy with that. We're okay with this. Oh, blew something up. Function has no attribute glob. What? Oh, because I'm doing from glob import glob, so I need to do it that way. Also, I should have done debug. So CSV list has our CSV scenes in it. Okay. So that's cool. So CSV file equals uh, we need rand int so you can add a C but always and so this is gives numbers between 0 and 9 from random import randint. Uh, equals, so CSV list. Randint from zero to length of CSV list. Oh, don't do that. Minus one. I have a lot going on right there. Oh, I got it all, maybe. Let's just run it and see what happens. Okay, so that passed. So that's a CSV file. And then a random thing from the CSV file. Um, all right, let's go back to pandas. So data frame read CSV file. All right, so we got that. Pandas, length, rows, columns, whatever. Hello. It's probably just like dot rows, right? 
Uh, is my internet alive? Okay, looks like I'm still online. But that didn't work. That didn't work. Am I still alive? Yep, that's working. Is Google down? That'd be kind of crazy. You can get the shape property. Oh, that's not helpful. That's what I'm looking for. Ted rows df dot count. I'm trying to get the number of rows for a data frame of pandas, and here's my code. Rows method two. Both code segments give me this error. What am I doing wrong? Dangerous. Beware of beware the dot count. Will only return the count for non na and nan rows of each column. You should use shape zero instead, which will correctly tell you the number of rows. Or just link data frame index. However, there are noble performance differences. Length data frame index is fastest. Could to reproduce the plot. Excludes items. So, whatever. This will be fine. All right, so what do we need to do? We've got the data frame. Rows equals row count. equals length of data frame index. Oops, I'll put this down here. Row count 80. Is that right? Oh, we've actually already got this in here. Is this going to be 80? 80. So it's indexed by 1. So it's really 79. So scene count... Scene count equals that minus one. That should be 79. Scene count 79. Okay, cool. So then we just take. Okay, we're not in bad shape. I'm still not sure how you would test this, but we're just gonna go straight at it. Because what we need is Countdown, and countdown is one word, right? It's the final one. Countdown equals self duration. Scene count is that. All right, hang on, backing up. I got to get this right. Um, So CSV list, and here's where we start going into the randomness. The 
so while countdown is greater than zero, countdown equals countdown minus one. I just want to not explode things in an infinite loop right now. Why is Y? Okay, there it goes. Because really what we want to do is come here, grab this, scene count index, and then we want to get get duration for clip. Clip duration equals self, get duration for clip. And then we're going to pass it uh, CSV file, scene list path, which is a CSV file, but that's fine. I'm kind of opening this thing twice. This is not the best way to do this, but like, and what else do we pass it? Scene ID. Scene ID equals rand int we need this to be one through scene count plus one. I think. Because this, yeah, because it's one through 80, or one through 79, but we really want 80, or 78 and 79, whatever. Because the rand, the last, the first number, and this is always confusing for me, the first number of rand gives you, the, like, puts that number in rotation, but the last number of rand is not in rotation. Um, and that always throws me a little bit. I'm sure there's reason that it's like that, but, like, still catches me. So scene ID equals scene ID. I don't know why that's red. Is that just because there's a debug there? Yeah, okay. And there's our concat command. I want to try and push all the way through this right now. So there's... CSV list. So here's our scene list. Clip root CSVs. We've got a CSV file. Crap. Now we got to get the. Mm, what's in the CSV file? Hang on. Let's look at this. Maybe it gives us the data we need. I don't think it does. Yeah, we need. So we need the the name. Oh, it's a bummer. Well, you could do. You could just get the directories and pull it that way. All right, I'm just gonna hack through this at this point. Ooh, that didn't work so good, there we go. My eye went all fuzzy when I did that. All right, well, let's just see if the clip duration stuff works. So I'm gonna take this out and we'll see if we had an infinite loop. How about that? There we go, let's take it out for real. Nope, something blew up. Method object is not scriptable. Rand, what? What line is this? 27? 27. Let's put it in parentheses. Wait. Oh, oh yeah, parents. Okay. Now, new error. 
single position indexer is out of bounds. Scene count length, what? Okay, so that worked. Test got slow. I don't know what's going on? Oh. It's an infinite loop. That's what's happening. Uh, here, let's do this. Let's put a debug right here. Let's do this and debug and see what we're getting. Clip duration. Oh, it got it. Maybe you got to in it. How about that's it? You can't subtract a... Um, watch my thing. A float from an int is my guess. Countdown's 108. Clip duration. Oh, I'm not actually taking it down either uh so maybe this will work but we're still gonna make it an end countdown equals countdown minus clip duration got it okay so that's working And now all we got to do is find CSV file. We need to get the name. This is gross. I should, this is where I should throw this into a test and like split this out into its own method, but like, it's just kind of already blurry. So this isn't going to hurt it too much worse. I should throw it to its own method. I'm not going to. I just got to figure out how to do it. See, this is weird because it's like method, like methods being called inside methods like this is always just a little bit fraught for me. Um, so instead, I'm just going to procedurally code it. File base name. File extension equals OS. Do we have OS in here yet? We do. Oh, maybe it's path. Split text with OS path dir name of CSV file. So now we got the file name to work with. Because what we need to have, where's our other one? Is, oh, I'm on the desktop, it's right here. This is the format, and actually, let me make sure that really is the format that I'm doing over here. Oh, I'm pretty sure it is. If not, I can change the formatting without too much trouble. Oh, but I need the directory too. Ah, but I can reassemble that, okay. So let me just see what's here.
base name. Whoops. That didn't work at all. It's in CSV file. Oh, it's got scenes at CSV. Ah. Because there's two, there's a, another directory here. Um, yo, Bob, Bob. How is that going to work? So I can get it. Why isn't this working, though? The pi extension. File base name without extensions. Nope, that's not the one I want. Get a file extension. File, file extension, split text, base name. Ah, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. I figured it out. Base name. All right, let's rerun this with the bug and see what's going on here. File base name. There you go. But it's got scenes on it. Um, so this is this is gross. This is so gross. Um, file hash name equals file base name split on dash zero to get the first one. Go away. There we go. Okay. Let's run this one more time. See what's going on. Hash name. Okay. So there's our hash. And then <laughs> this is gross. This is gross. This is gross. File hash subdir is file hash name from zero to two characters. All right, one more time. Nice, right on, just chilling. So there's our file hash name and there's our file pattern. So with that, we can reassemble the clip thing that we need with the scene. So we've got our clip, we've got our duration. So here's, and then, so this is going to be clip path. It's going to equal clip root clip root slash hash subdur, this is just gross. Hash name, dash scene, uh, is it always an MP4? Crap, I don't know if it's always an MP4. Wait, maybe I've got one. Is one of them? Oh, it can be a move. Ah, crap. I, I guess you could glob it and then pull it in. Currently making a test and backup copy for my project. Nice. Very cool. Uh, testing, good. That's what I'm struggling with right now. Also struggling with how do I get, like I can, I can get this. So if you're pulling
So what you would do, clip path, is so if we just get the directory. with OS path dir name of the clip file or the CSV file, sorry. That gives us the path into it. And from there, let's try this. Um, File path equals glob on clip directory slash star dot scene dash Where's it, where are we getting our clip number from? Scene ID from scene ID star. All right. What happens if we kick it here? Did not debug because I did not hit debug. Right where you're supposed to get the access code for the login system. What I'm doing is watching on tablet, chatting on laptop, right? Nice. Uh, I don't know how you do that actually. Um. There may be like a breakout button somewhere. You're talking about just like loading out the um the chat, just popping out the chat, right? So zooming into space. I thought somewhere down here there's a way to like expand it or click it out to its own thing. Why is that still talking? I don't know how to make it stop. There you go. Pop out chat. From down here. Give that a shot if that's what you're talking about. All right, so we got, what does file path have for us? Did file path shows up with nothing? Oh crap, it's also a thing. Oh look, it shows you up here too. That's so sweet. Nah, you found it, nice. I knew it was there somewhere. Uh, pretty sure I'd seen it before. Ugh, this is just gross, I don't like any of this, but I don't wanna redo it. Why didn't that work? File path still has nothing. What is going on? Oh, it needs recursive. Ah, gotcha. So. Star scene 
dash scene ID. Curse of true. Now let's see what we get. And also, we should only hit one thing if we get it, so we're gonna pull it out of the list at zero. Because I need this path to add on to the list. Uh-oh. What happened? The curse is true, it did not like. That's all the test stuff. We don't need the test stuff we need here. F glob, why didn't it like it? Oh, well, try it this way. See what happens. Still exploded. All right. Oh, maybe because of that. List index out of range. Oh, so there's nothing in it. Come on, we gotta hit it. Oops, wrong one. File path. I don't have any scenes in there. <sighs> That's a bummer. Wait, is that why the other thing was failing earlier? Because I didn't have any scenes in there? Scene list. Subder. Why did I back off of this? Clip duration for clip. Why did I back off of this? Just because I thought it'd be easier to do it the other way? File path. Oh, because you gotta get, you gotta catch, you gotta catch that. But no, file base name, we got that. Hash name, we've got. Subdur, we've got. Clip path. Why didn't this work? What was wrong with this? Oh, you need to know if it's a move or a MP4. That's right. So I gotta put, I gotta put them in there. Um. That's right. That's why. All right. So let's edit. Oh, yes. This is just gross. Uh, we need to just put in some files, I guess. And of course, I renamed them all. Ugh. All right, so duplicate this, call the 11, move it up here. And let's rename all these boogers. Uh, better rename nine. Place text at the beginning. OB. With 11. 
rename. And then we'll drop those in. Oh, this sucks. And then we need to go ahead and do this other one. Wait, which one did I do here? AD ends in AD. Ends in AD. Okay, so it's this one. And this one becomes 22. Oops. 22. And then we'll go in here, select all those, rename these. Yeah, like not digging what we ended up with at this point, but it's, I'm still, I'm okay with it. I don't particularly like it, but whatever. Oh, so yeah, we need to put those back in too. 22, so we go to dev, NAS assembler, test, clip root, 22. Okay, so then we want to try this again with let's just run that and see what happens uh, let's try it for it why not scene ID star like it feels like that should work now that we have the files actually in there Give me a file path, file path. There we go. Okay. Which this is really clip file path. Just to be a little more explicit, clip file path. So we got our clip duration. And we've got our clip file path. We've got our scene. So scene ID goes to scene count. Last time that didn't work. We're gonna try it now. Seems to have worked. If we test the whole thing, what happens? All right, we're passing. Sweet. Now we'll scene count plus one work. Oops, wrong button. No, it will not. Why isn't that working? List index out of range. Wait a minute. Every other time it's freaking out. All right, let's put in some debugging stuff so we can see what's going on. Oh. Oh my God. That's terrible. 
Och. I don't know what to tell you, man. That's awful. That's gross. And not like this gross, but like, ew. Yeah. Like industry and in, in, industrial accident or whatever. Yeah, machines don't care. Yeah, that's. I'm surprised that made it up there and then pulled it. My guess is it goes away pretty quick. Usually they're pretty good about filtering that stuff out. Yeah, I don't like seeing that kind of stuff at all. That gets in my head. Um. Yeah, I don't like that one bit. It's just awful. Time left. Countdown. Total scenes. Scene count. Yeah, no, there's no like, yeah. Yeah, seriously, that's not, that's just awful. Yeah, ban his ass. I got no tolerance for that. Quick scene. All right, let's see if we can figure out what's going on with this. Why it keeps crashing on us. Total scenes, 19 pick scenes. Okay, so somehow Whatever, it's fine. It's only 19. That's an off by one error, so there you go. Happy programming. Total scenes, time left. Duration is clip duration. Pick scenes time left to twenty. Yeah, whatever, it's all good. See, I don't like this though. 30, oh, 30 seconds left. Total scenes took, yeah, 26 though. This is too long. All right, let's go ahead and fix that. Clip path, clip duration. Oh, before we do that, and see, this is where this one gets hard to test. But I'm I, I'm not really gonna be able to test it. So scene list clip duration. Oops. How do you skip stuff in Python? How do you like jump a loop? Um. Pi while next. Really? Pi 
Python next loop iteration. Flow control. Break continue. Okay. While break continue. Print current letter. Second example, blah blah blah. See, this is, this is bad, don't do this. Don't put two examples with two sets of output. Give an example, give the output, give an example, give the output. There's no, like, it's not helpful, um, but it's continue. Okay, so file while next, G-O-N-T-I-N-U-E, this way I can find it again. Um, Yeah, so let me just run this. Uh, counter equals 10, while counter is greater than zero, zero, print counter if counter equals two, Continue. Just to make sure I've got this right, right? So it should skip. Also, that was a bad idea. Stop. It's never gonna stop. That's one of the things with Code Runner. It, if you biff it, it doesn't stop. Scratchpad. Should have done it here, anyways. I'm starting to use this more and more. While loop continue next. While loop continue next. That pi counter equals ten. While counter is greater than zero. I keep missing that. Uh, if counter is two, continue, print counter, and then counter equals, or is it plus equals one? Does that work here in Python? Tonight, uh-oh. Oh, I went up, I went up. I didn't go down, I should've gone down. Don't go up when you mean to go down. That's bad. Three, two, yep. Oh, but why didn't we get to one? It's weird. Should just stop and run. Oh. Because on continue, it stays on four forever. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Wait, is that example right? Oh, these are for breaks. No, wait, where's the continue? If letter H continue, if var equals five continue. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. so they're doing it here. Oops. really what I want is to go here and say, so we've got the clip duration. If clip duration, can you compare? Is greater than 10.0 oh. greater than 10, right? Can you compare ints and floats? See, this is why I like code runner though. It doesn't, oh, except that it's dead. It's dead, dead. We're just gonna force quit that. See ya. Um, oops. Yeah, force quit code runner. Yes, I have.
Um, save. What's going on? Let's try it again. Let's get him back to life. There we go. So num equals 13 dot blah. If num is greater than 10, print here. I expect this works. Okay, yeah. So it's it can compare ints and things. So if clip duration is greater, continue. Because I only want to put clips that are, eh, we'll do 12 seconds. Uh, 10 seconds, that's fine. I only want to put in clips that are less than 10 seconds. But where that continue goes, yeah, it pulls a random CSV file. So it's going to ran it. Like, I was afraid that like if there was one video and one file, it would just keep doing that same one over and over again. But this will actually, every time it goes, it looks at the CSV list pulls it down and fires off the files. So that bumps it and then we drop the countdown and then the last thing that we need to do is append to the scene list, the file path. So scene list append clip file path. This is gross, this is so gross. print clip is that all right so let's just run the whole thing and see what happens these are all getting yeah the extensions are there okay cool Got a whole ton of people to flood them with reports. Good. Yeah. Oops, that didn't work. Man. I gotta get back here. Access token. Yeah. Oh, the login button coming in. Yeah, uh, I wish I knew more about that stuff. Like I was looking at your, your code, right? And I can't figure out where, like I don't really know what the fragment is and if it has the access token. You get the state. Yeah, I don't know. The only, so, no. I don't know why that would make something disappear. Like there's, there has to be something somewhere else in that file that's looking for one of these values maybe. Yeah, I just don't know enough about it. Yeah, this all seems fine, right? This isn't doing anything particular. This is just making a server. Okay, I got it. URL object. Free code, URL, access code is, yeah. Uh, 
Fetch OAuth token. Yeah, search. I don't know. I wish I could help. I really do. You're going to have to just keep hammered on it. <laughs> I wish I had something better to say. Uh, state parameters just security. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, doing it line by line is, is not a bad way. To, so if you just add, so if you take all this crap out and just do if fragment has access token, does that choke it? Doing the line by line, that's that's smart. That's good. Um, and that may have just been what you just said, but yeah, just to just to clarify, you you tried with just if fragment has access token, nothing, right? So to make sure there's not, and then put each one. If it only has the first line, it still doesn't work. Okay, see that's super weird because that shouldn't like that if statement doesn't do anything. by itself right and if is a conditional but if nothing is inside the conditional and it's not breaking the rest of the page do you see this console log message Or would that only happen if there's a click action that happens? So what you might want to do is like, oops, I need this over here. So returning console log is also a little bit weird. Um, but just do like console log, whoops. One, two, whatever, three, four, just to see if you see anything, right? This is just poking at it to see what happens. No, it only logs the console. Yeah. Yeah. Give that a shot just so you can see if something's crashing somewhere um, or freaking out somewhere. And then like while you're looking at those, see if you see error messages in, in between them. Um, would be another thing. Yeah. This you're just you're going to have to experiment basically is what it messes with, and just like keep trying random stuff um, until you find one that that happens. I, I don't get why that wouldn't do it. Where is fragment decide? So did you, sorry, did you, the other one is, did you try, um, have you tried just doing something like this and seeing if just that makes it go away? Give, give that a shot too. Const fragment new URL search pattern. Okay, gotcha. And if fragment has fragment get, okay. Oh, if fragment has access token. Oh, okay, 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 okay. State, state parameter, local storage, get item, state parameter. State parameter not equals to code URI, URL state, or URL state, right?
Yeah, I still don't know why that wouldn't. What's the code around your login button would be the other question. Like how, where's, where's that? Got a lot of errors. Okay, that's actually good, right? Because now you can start focusing on the errors and ping down in and see where, you know, start with the lowest one or start with the highest one, whichever way. I forget which way JavaScript works. Um, you probably want to start with the top one uh, and then kind of bang through and see, see where you can hit it. All right, so that's testing out. Clip duration. We're pinning our clip. So concat command. So really this would be this, this. Wait, how do you do join in Python? Pi join. Example join string. Yeah, you do. Oh, oh right. So you got to go. Space dot join. Scene list, right? And let's just print this right here. Concat command and run. What are you going to get? A bunch of craziness. That looks like a concat command. That's it. That's a concat command. So now we can't test this one because there's just too much randomness in it. And like, I, th I think I could get around that and I think I could get into it. But realistically, this is the thing. And then we can drop this. Whoops. That's not what I meant to do at all. Thank you. Thank you. Whoops. Whoa. I don't know what that was. Get that. So we've got concat command. And then we can go uh, we can go from there. All right, see what you got. We have a slow pace band is what we have, which is probably more on my network than theirs. My network is, what's going on? Okay, that works. That's okay. Good Lord. What's going on? I need to log in. Okay, I understand. No. HFD. So. The first thing I see is try try taking this out, right? This display none with your code in there and see if it still shows up. Style display block. Okay, this may be it. I think this is it. So when this is firing, Can't figure out if that's yeah. So if if this hits, this display none is active. I think I think is what's happening. 
if this stuff doesn't go, it hits the else, which document get ele element by ID login. So up here is login by ID. Uh, style display. So style display. Uh, block. And so block blocks a visible thing. None is invisible. So I think that's where you're going wrong. Or not wrong, but like I think that's what's catching you. So if you if you just remove this, the login button should be there all the time. Now there may be a reason that you want to hide it. Like if you are logged in, then you don't want to log you don't want the login button to be there. You'd want a log out button, for example. Um, but give that a give that a shot. Oh, what two errors say scripting? Well, and so and the other trick is like if it works. Sometimes errors happen. <laughs> I try to make them go away, but like if you get it going, that's the first step. And then you can kind of troubleshoot the errors from there. Um, oh, it's back. Okay, cool. So taking that out, got it there? I, I think if you take that out, it will be there 100% of the time. Because um, that's that's wrapping this whole thing. Um, I think is what's happening. Uh, and don't worry about not being great at JavaScript yet. Like it's just it's just practice. That's all any of this stuff is, is practice. And so, but the only way you, the only way you get good at a thing is being crappy at a thing, right? Sorry, not right. I mean, that's like provable. The only way to get good at a thing is being crappy at it first and being crappy at it for a while and becoming less crappy at it. Eventually you're good at it. Yeah, so I think that I think that's behavior that you're looking for there, right? Is if you're logged in, don't show login. If and so I think that's so somehow this logic makes it think that you're logged in. I don't know if that's what that's really supposed to do or not, but that's how that's how it's flicking this on and off. Is basically this code makes it look like it's assuming that you're logged. That based off just scanning this, I would say that that top piece of code makes it like you are logged in. And then if you aren't that, you're not logged in. So it presents, so it shows the thing and then you get it in your login button. That was a lot of back and forth there. I hope you followed that. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's where I think that's where I think that's what's catching you. Um, all right. So we can't test this, but we can test the rest of it. Cause it, like the randomness is involved in there, but so that's, that's the concat command. So we got that. Let's actually run all the tests. Uh, and I'm gonna have to go in just a minute. Actually, hang on one second. I need to see what's up. Hmm, good, it went to the other window like it was supposed to. Oh, sweet. Nobody's pinged me yet. Uh, actually, I need to check. Oh, it's going to get dark soon. Oh, sweet. Nothing to do right now. Cool. Work is not calling on my days off, which is nice. Oh, sorry, I was just blurring stuff out. I needed to pull up some work stuff, um, which usually goes to the other screen, but I wanted to make sure if it goes to the screen that it's all blurry and stuff. So um, also, I just think that looks really cool. Like, it seems like alien code.
Yeah, I just needed to check some work stuff. I was supposed to have a meeting about now, but they haven't contacted me, so I'm not going to contact them. Uh, I'm using OBS, and I just found a tutorial online that's basically you make a really small version of the screen, and then you expand it back out, and that just blurs it to like that. So um, it's pretty cool. But yeah, just straight OBS stuff, and there's no plugins, no nothing with it. Um, but it works nicely, and I think it looks kind of cool, actually. Yeah, just straight OBS. Whatever the, I forget which one. Whatever the plain free one is um, that doesn't have any magic with it. Which is just, it's super incredible software. Like, I can't believe it's free and exists. Excuse me. Um, okay, so if we got the this going, and that's the... Wait, why don't that work? Here we go. Come here. You come here. You go. Oh, because we're not calling it. Um, all right, so let's go back to the assembler and assemble videos. So this is going to look through the MP3 files in the file list, which get defined here just by looking at MP3s. Oh, and you know what I need to do is... Sorry, I do need to do one other thing here. Which this file name... I need to hang on to this file name. Concat command. And then what we want is... Self current temp file equals a string... Wait a minute, did I even need to do that? Yes, I needed to come up with a concat command. I still need to do the output path. Okay, this we can actually test. We'll do that in a minute. Kind of brain fight a second, I'm about to take a break. Cause all right, so let me clear this. Let me commit this, actually, is what I should do. Um, what's the right way to... So... That's just a lot of code. Print compact command... Return concat command. So when we call it, it's going to call to make video. And we're just touching it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, see, this is all fraught. Um, NASA assembler, so NASA assemble videos. So oh, let's actually run to main for a second and see what happens. It explodes. Which one did it not like? From MP3, so. Oh, I guess I need to do NASA assembler. See, this is where it gets weird. Okay. Why didn't that give me anything? A simple video is print concat command, which should be its own thing. Countdown's duration. File list. 
Ah, whatever. Uh... Config dev. Smoke test MP3 files. Clip files, output files. That's what we need to do is populate those. Copy that. Actually, just copy this. And then output is fine. So now if we run it, Still didn't work. Uh, oh, I'm running the wrong thing. That's why. Let's try running this one. There you go. So that's the concat command. Why did it do it twice? Why did it do it twice? Uh, NASA assembler self load file list for file and file list. Why did it do it twice? Doesn't make any sense. I mean, of course it makes sense because computers are pretty good at math. Oh, oh, okay. It didn't run through it twice. I just printed it twice. Print concat command. And I'm actually printing it inside here. So that's what's going on. Okay, found that. So now we do this. So that will make... Let's actually try and run that as a command because they're all solid paths. Oops. Oh, come on. Patch arm. Don't do that. So there's a very long command. Oh, this should all be quoted. Oh, crap. But let's just run it and see what happens. Ooh, look at that. That's awesome. Oh, I'm probably not in the right thing. Let's get to a solid directory. Oh, come on. Oh, it's compiled against, uh, against a different thing. Okay. The homebrew updated everything on my computer the other day, and it broke lots of stuff. This appears to be another thing that it broke. I don't even know what sourcing your JS file means, so don't feel bad. Um, the way you make cookies, I think it depends on what software you're using, but there should be like a set and a get somehow for the cookies. And then you give it a name. So it's, it's a key value pair. So like you would say set name equals Bob. And then you would say get name and you get Bob. Um, hey, protocol. What's up? I broke FFmpeg. FFmpeg concat. I'm redoing my NASA thing. Let's see if this installs again. Homebrew updated the other day and exploded everything. So, uh, whatever, it happens. It just took a little while to fix it. Um, added three packages, removed six. Ten packages are looking for funding. When I become a millionaire, I will fund them. All right, let's see if this works. Come on. Uh, let's, so that's the command. All right, work. 
boy, if this doesn't work, that's gonna be frustrating. So how's it going with you, Protocol? Doing good? Oh yeah. Just chilling, right at it. Yeah, um, I think you're five in front of me. So 10-ish over there, a little after. The module F MPEG whatever node was compiled against a different node JS version. Please try recompiling or reinstalling the node. All right, let's try this. See what happens. What's I got to do? That was fast and easy. Take it work. Nope. Let's try this. Whoops, that didn't work. WebGL, maybe? Is that a thing? Oh, one package added. Oh, crap. Uh, Bob, so I use an app called NVAlt for my notes, which I really like. Um, it takes some getting used to. Because you like, if I hit Control L, it takes me up here in that the search bar, and so I do like Pi dash whatever, which is what are called nunce words. So those are just my Python tags basically, and then you could do like whatever while loop counters. So if I hit Enter, it goes into that file. But the cool thing is, if I'm up here and I do Pi some example, and there's no file that's in there that matches that. If I hit enter, it makes a new file with that title and then you can do whatever. Um, and it's super fast to get around. So I really like it. Um, it's one of the best, uh, one of the best tools that I've got actually. Oh, Ansible. Nice. I used Ansible just a little bit wait which ones there's ansible there's docker there's vagrant there's chef there's puppet like they're all in the same world i know they all do different slightly different things which one is ansible i don't remember which one that that is or which one it does does that make the containers or is that the orchestration piece yes cookies whatever Drive automation across open hybrid. I didn't know Red Hat had them. Is that new? Or could be years, but. Yeah, that's where you set up the servers, right? So, like, you put. Or do you even have to put a client on Ansible? Or you just send it stuff and it makes the server look a certain way? Is that Ansible? How Ansible works? I could click on that link and find out. Practically simple IT automation engine, automates cloud provisioning, configuration management. Okay, right. Yeah, it uses no agents. So that's actually, that's the thing that turned me on to it versus I think Chef and Puppet are in a similar world, but those, those require you to have like either a central server or put software on the servers or do whatever. Um, I, I liked Ansible because it was like, I think it's just, sends commands over SSH, basically, right? YAML for Ansible. Yeah. SSH keys are your friends. Yes, they are. Ansible authorized keys, yeah. Yeah, I played with this a little bit. Um, I don't do enough server stuff to really need it right now. Um, but I liked it. The other one I'm looking at a little bit is cloud formation, which I think is a similar a similar world. Well, 
let const redeclaration. Oh, so probably what that means, Bob, is somewhere in your file you've got something like, you know, um, whatever. Const my name equals Bob, right? And then later you're you've got another one where instead of just doing my name equals John, you're doing you're putting const in front of it again. Is my guess. I again you're in you're in a world that I'm not really sure about, but that would be the first thing I'd look at is trying to find that. It see if it gives you a line number um and or the explicit like the name of the thing, basically. Hope, hopefully if, if the error message is good, that can help you walk into it. <sighs> this is a bummer is what this is. Uh, NPM uninstall. Is that a thing? Up to date, found zero from release. Okay. I wasn't expecting that message, but we'll see what happens. But yeah, Bob, I, I really liked Ansible in terms of the, the connect, or sorry, protocol. Um, in terms of the connections and doing the SSH stuff. That's a pretty slick way to do it. Oh, stuff isn't supported anymore. All right, well, at least it's installing, so hopefully we'll see what happens. Oh my God, FSmpeg was the th concat. This is the thing that I had huge problems installing on the Amazon servers when I was trying to do that because they're headless. Um, so hopefully this won't be happening here too. And, I, and then I got to figure out how to get it installed on a Windows machine. So that may be pain waiting to happen. But that's where I need to run this stuff. So I want to see this command go before I dig back into anything else. So I guess I really should clean up the other parts of this that we didn't need. I'm nervous to rip stuff out but we're going to do it anyways. So scene count, we need, we just didn't do any of this stuff, right? Because we pulled the file name via just hitting it directly. So I don't think I need this or this or this. All right, let's run that one more time and see if we still get some output. Yep, cool. Two of the exact same variable. Yeah, right. Uh, return statement outside of function. Yeah, so start looking for returns and <laughs> start looking where the brackets are. Um, again, if it gives you a line number, hopefully that'll help. Um, if it doesn't give you a line number, try a different browser and see if that gives you a line number. Sometimes like they have different um, reporting mechanisms. This finished yet? Nope. See, this is making me worry because that's taking an awful long time. I need to change the font colors on this. These are kind of hard to read. Yeah, they look actually better on the other monitor, but says that require is not defined. Oh, so I think you would just do this by itself. And then const HTTP would go to, would point to something else. I don't think you don't you don't do you don't assign require to a variable. Like the require is sits above it, is its own thing. I think. Again, this is I'm guessing off of the other stuff that I've done.
Yeah, but that const HTTP, you need to give that something else. I don't know what. Um, to have it actually do an assignment. Yeah, so re yeah, so require goes to its own line. Yep, I think that's right. I'm really not digging this. We'll just, so it's 23 after. We'll give it a couple minutes and see what happens. But we got all this out. Did I spell integration wrong there? I'm not gonna screw with it. So we can't really test this because that's all randomness. MP3 goes, so this is ready to go. Um, that's the wrong file, assembler. So the CSVs can stay, that can all stay, that can 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 stay. Okay, that's cool. Um, I just didn't wanna import all my, I just put a whole bunch of videos in there and like, I don't need those in my Git repo, just taking up space. Um, cat command, it's pretty slick. Oh, you can use to add modules to variable. Okay, yeah. See, you're, I, I'm outside. I'm outside my area of knowledge. Um, that looks that looks suspicious to me, but I, I don't know. I don't know what you're in, so uh, or I don't know enough about what you're doing or what that language and that framework does to to know. So if you can assign it, then it seems like you should be able to assign it. Is the module installed? I would guess. Hey, it finished. Added 222 packages, wow. Still didn't work. <sighs> oh, am I in? No, oh, 15, NPM version maybe? Seven, okay, none of those match. Error, the module webgl.node was compiled against a different Node.js version using module version number 72. This version of Node.js requires, requires 88. I thought I just did that. FFMVCAT knows. Oh, what if we do GL? Uh, npm rebuild gl. Oh, do you pass rebuild a name? Maybe that's what we need to do. I'm still frustrated with the whole homebrew eating itself. Put HTTP in a string, but it already is. I don't know. Yeah, I I don't know enough to help you. I wish I did. Just kind of keep poking at it. Um, I can't think of uh, I can't think of where that would go, or how that would roll in. But then again, I thought you weren't supposed to do what you were doing, but you were so. I'm clearly not an expert in that. Um, what am I doing? Uh, stand by. I should talk, except I can't do that when I'm typing. Some people can do that, and it, they, I think they're witches. That is not something I'm able to do. Also, I just accidentally sent a GIF that I meant to send five days ago. 
to somebody. So hopefully they get it. They'll receive it. I'm pretty confident of that, but hopefully they understand it. All right, GL, come on, you be the you be the winner tonight. Um, I don't want to mess with anything else until that goes because I want to look at that command and I want to see it run. Um, okay, so that builds the concat command. That's going to do the concatenation that gives us the temp video, which goes to this location. And so really we need to name that to hyperspeed mp4 dot temp because that's not the final location of it. Which I don't know where I made that name. It's a very weird sounding song. I'm with you, Bob. I'm with you. Those are the moments when we prove ourselves through our determination and grit and stubbornness. Yeah, start. The other thing to try is like start backing pieces away. Like keep trying to isolate down to find the thing. You know, keep t taking stuff out and putting it like take it out, see if it fixes it. If not, put it back in. Take stuff out. If that doesn't fix it or break it a different way, put it back in. Like keep and small things, right? Just keep basically refining in and looking for variables. And yes, it might take forever. Uh, it gets easier a little bit once you've got ten to fifteen years of experience. Um, no, I'm kidding. But uh, yeah, sometimes it kind of sucks. Big brain, yeah. Look at the big brain on Brad. Um, where am I making this file name, by the way? Because I don't know. It's got to be up here somewhere, right? Countdown, CSV list, scene list. Read list, scene, scene ID. Concat command. File output path. Oh, output path. It's its own thing. Oh, this is actually going to break a test. Oh, I can actually do this. Ah, oh, look at this. I can do .temp.mp4. That's so nice. All right, this is going to break a test. But that's OK, because that's what we want to have happen. Test mp3 file. You're going to break, I think. Yup. Also, I didn't realize that was going to run that. Kind of weird. Okay, yeah, there it is. So test output path dot temp mp4. Let's rerun that. Sweet, rerun the whole suite. Because this, the concat command, oh, something else broke. Um, oh, did it get dark? Yeah. Oh, yeah, the screen's starting to get all funky. I'll turn some lights on in a second. Um, Albert of the Einsteins, I love it. Uh, so I do have a green screen, um, but it's you're about to see it kind of weird. Um, it's already getting all staticky because there's not enough light hitting it to uh, to do it. Um, let me figure out why this test is broken. And I'll turn some lights on. I prefer working in the dark, but like you can't do that in stream as much, um, or it's not as good for stream. I need to get like a really good camera that can see in the dark. I almost I almost bought an infrared camera uh, to try it. Test result fail it false is not true. Okay. Output file. So it's probably this one. Is that what's happening? What is guessing? Throwing stuff at it. Uh passed. Is this gonna pass? There we go, all passing. Cool, yeah, so, because the concat command makes 
the video file, I still have to combine it with the audio file to make the final product. Um, so it needs to have a temp name, but it now has a temp name. So that's cool. Uh, but like, that's pretty close. Cause the next thing is really just take up. Yeah. And I've got the output path and I've got the file path. The next thing is just doing the FFmpeg command. So if I can just get concat to work and call it, is this done yet? Okay. Uh, npm rebuild. I don't think I tried this yet. Mm. Bindings, ffmpeg, cat. GL, I don't know, whatever. Let's see what that does. I do know eventually, like it gets a little bit darker out there and this camera just doesn't handle it. Um, Uh, let me actually turn it all the way off for a second. So there it is. I just don't want to mess with the existing one. Just in case I've completely screwed up. Oop. Yeah, see, it's right at the threshold of when I start to disappear. the contrast yeah see it's it's just like right there it just there's not enough differentiation between the two i'll just turn on some lights or you just do it like this be ghost the whole time yeah whatever i'll turn on some lights in a second Yes, yeah, that's about that's about as close as I can get it, but it's still getting all the uh, all the stuff over there. <laughs> Green face. I actually am an alien. Yeah, floating head. Uh, that's actually I hadn't noticed that. I like that. Just hanging out. That's actually one of the reasons I got the gray bar underneath the thing so when the green screens work in you can actually see a little bit of separation between me and whatever is going on um uh i'm gonna try this one more time actually i'm gonna try this until it works but right now i'm gonna try it one more time but right now i'm gonna turn on some lights and take a pit stop I'll be right back. We'll see if this actually works.
There's your green screen. And my snack. Just let this sit. This freaks me out about node. Left pad is deprecated. I think that was the one that exploded a long time ago where the developer got angry about something and took it out of the repository and a bunch of things relied on it. And it's just pad just space padding. And it broke everything. Not broken a single guideline. Wait. <clears throat> oh, really? Weird. Yeah. That's a... I understand how that would pass. Like, that moderation should hit that. Please work. When all this fails, Google. Do I need to upgrade note? Whoa, look at that. Please try recompiling and installing findings. Can you apply the version of Node.js? An electron using a product. If you change Node.js versions in your project, native dependencies. Serial port with under dev. How do you upgrade Node? Oh, wait. Did I do. Did I do new, uh, nude? Brew through node, node through brew. Install node. Yeah, I, I've actually got a, a light over there kicking into the wall. Um, oh, should change that color correction a little bit. That was for earlier. Me slightly less orange. Still not the greatest color, but that's better. Yeah, yeah, that's what I've got is a light kicking into the corner over there that gives a cross light this way. I should put another one up over there because, like, you get the highlight spot happening, but. Perfect. Excellent. Excellent. I like perfect light. So did I install this with brew is the question. Doesn't look like it. Source code Mac installer. So that's 14.5, 14.15. That's 15. What is going on? Oh, that's LTS, current latest features. 15.2.1. 15.2.1. Okay, so I'm up to date. 
okay. So probably not that. <sighs> Node list packages. How do you do that? It's not really what I'm looking for. Node GLS step zero. Node GLS depth equals not a NPM. Invalid tag name depth. Could I copy it and paste it? What did I do wrong? Oh, dash dash depth. I gotcha. Oh, I need Angular. I don't know what Bower is. Um. Uninstall. I N S T A. There you go. Oh, in. Eh, there we go. Let's just start over. NPM global list depth nothing. Whoops, goofed it. Oh, still worked. Interesting. I just uninstalled those, so why are they still there? Oh, wait a minute. Maybe you gotta do it globe. Uh, maybe we know what's going on now. Let's get rid of all this stuff. Okay, now let's see what's going on. That looks better. I don't know what Nodemon is. Or Bower. Bower is an assembly package, right? Like a compiler or a builder, whatever. NPM. This is not how I got to it earlier. I thought there was a, what was I looking at the other day that had, like you needed to do open CV on it. I don't think it was this one. I can't remember what it was, but in the, in the install, you had to do an open CV install. Yep. Okay. So we do want to do this. Please work. This may take it a minute. Oh, it's not downloading? Uh, it's several years old. Um, I'm assuming it's still alive. Are you on a Mac or a PC? I guess I should ask that question. It's a Mac, it's a Mac only thing. If you are on a Windows machine, I cannot help you. Yeah, updated last in 2017. Oh, you're on PC, yeah. 
that's not a thing. Um, and I don't know. I haven't found anything like it on PC. Uh, there was one that I played around with a little bit that I liked. Uh, Microsoft's OneNote years ago wasn't bad. Um, I don't know what it's like anymore, but it's it was a pretty good collection thing. But yeah, I mean, whatever. So if Notepad works, Notepad works. Like, as long as you're writing stuff down and you can get back to it, you're making progress. All right, so this took a little while last time. So let's go see what's happening in Python world. So we've got the FFF MPEG concat command. Now we're going to make the FFF MPEG combine command, which I think, so we just take the output path Concat output path. So this should be temp output path. We're going to make this. I'm going to break some test here for a second. But that's going to be OK. Yeah, we're actually going to run the. Con oh, this is this is actually closer than I thought. Self output root. Temp output path, temp output path. And we actually are going to add a test for this one. So first, let's just make sure all this stuff works. It's funny, I'm kind of like, I don't want to test anymore. So this is temp output path. And then we're going to do final output path. Which is going to be the same thing minus the temp. Final output path. So that doesn't exist. So this is going to blow up. Boom. Final output path self. I'm just going to grab all this, put this down here, and drop this. Come back here, go here, run that. There you go. Run the full suite. There we go. Yeah, a, a DMG is a digital image. I don't remember what it stands for. <laughs> DMG to ping. Nice. Nice. Very cool. What are you saving? Like, what, what servers are you doing? Or what are you saving on? Or just, like, on your local host? this work? Nope, not yet. So the FFmpeg command we can actually test. One of these days I will remember that this exists. Whoa, don't do that. So FFmpeg, I, so what did I do? This, 
Let me go find out what I did on the other one. I really wish that would open on click. Uh... A charm. Short clipboard history. Oh, I didn't get it. Pie charm. Click to open file. Click on the gear project. Enable auto scroll to source option. Gear. Oh, there we go. Open files with single click. That's easy. Single click. See, this is what I do is just whenever I run into anything that I don't do very often, I just throw a note in. Um, even though like this is super simple, right? Um, but I don't do it very often. Like most of the time it's there, but like I had to go Google it. So if I have to go Google it, I'm going to throw it in my notes because I can find it a lot faster that way. So now if I click here, there we go. Video. There's only test MP3 pile clip FFmpeg. Clip command. No, so that's making a clip. Where's the. Yeah, let's do it this way. Dev. Oh, it finished. All right. Okay, 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 okay. Before we do that, let's do this. Please work. Oh, that's a good sign. I'm excited. Oh, local storage. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, see, local storage wasn't a thing when I was doing web stuff. So, like, I'm still... It doesn't sit in my head yet that it's there. Scene 20. Why did that have weird percent 012s after it? I'm not going to mess with it. It's fine. It's doing its thing. Render. Oh, this is moving fast. Oh, I wonder if this is going to run into... Ah, see, I did a thing with the other clips where I did some cleanup. I wonder if it's going to freak out on the concat because some of the stuff may not be the same. I'll have to watch that. They may not all, they may not all run. Because um, some of that stuff I had in this one, in this clip where it was doing all this clip stuff, like I was forcing it to a specific aspect ratio. Oh, I forget what this did. It was the width and height. Somehow it was basically forcing it 
to fit something. Oh, I remember what it is. So some some of the footage they have is from old 4x3 footage. And this was basically making sure that it was fitting in 16x9 in footage. Um, or 16x9 window and putting bars around it. Um, and I think there's also some scale, some like... It wasn't just scale. I thought there was something else. But that's all that this is, is scaling. Get on the logo. Always good. I wish I had design skills. That is not a thing that I was given as a skill. Uh, that or drawing. Not my thing. I'm on a Discord with a cat who is just amazing at drawing stuff. And it was like... Oh, actually, I think I've got it. Here, well, it's... I want to... We can wait a minute while that thing's going. Uh... Where is it? Oh, Inktober, this is it. This guy's stuff is amazing. Like, I would murder somebody to be able to draw like that. And like, this is, he did one of these each day. The, this was his Inktober. Like, that's just fantastic. And like the negative space on this one. Kira. Killer, killer, killer. Oh, look at that. Let's see what we got. Strong start. Yeah, most of these are from the same video because I'm not loaded in with other stuff yet. So it's not going to be as all over the place as normal. Yeah, and that's the same clip. So that's the same clip, right? Because there's only 20 or no, there's like, I don't know, what are 60 clips in there or whatever. So it's going to hit some of them multiple times. The whole trick with this is getting a ton of them. That one made me dizzy. Same clip twice in a row, all right. That happens. But that's going. So the, now the last thing is to do the assembly with the music. Yeah, being able to draw like that. Whew. That would be awesome. Oh yeah, I need to figure out. So I've got... I've got the splitter running on my other machine. It's not right now because it would probably kill the stream but the splitter runs but unfortunately the way that I did it it builds all the CSV files first and then goes and does all the splitting but I already had so many files downloaded that it still hasn't split anything out yet it's still building the CSV files that give you the the details for the split um which is kind of a bummer because I can't like I can't run this yet because there's no there's no fuel for it um i'll leave that going overnight why did that work that was kind of weird uh oh i know what i was gonna do so dev nasa no video assembler There's the concat command, temp output file, mp3. Okay, so here's what I'm doing. Copy video to copy. MA shortest I found. So this is my command. Oh yeah, here's another thing that Homebrew broke. The Python interpreter for that project's dead. So test ffmpeg command. I want to get... Oh, it's gone all 
one place. Single quote, please. Not two, just one. F. No, we don't need the F. FFmpeg I. Ah, oh, I wish I had fake FFs going. Ah, oh, yes. I guess I could. Oh, you don't have to call it in the setup. I could call it individually for things. I just realized that. Okay, I could have done that. Even though most of it needs to have it anyways, I'd rather go one way or the other. Um, output path, which is gonna be this. And I don't like doing this with testing where everything's having the same paths all the time. But I don't have a good way to work around that at the moment. I mean, I could, but and here's our input file. Which goes right here. Copy map. Video zero to video zero, audio one to audio zero, shortest final output file. Wait, input. Oh, this is the temp. Okay, I need to get to where I can see it. So that's input, that's input. I've never heard this song before. Which is funny, I've listened to these tracks a thousand times, so it's only a couple hundred of them, and it's never played this one before. this before. I didn't recognize the, uh, didn't recognize it until it did the uh, scale up, whatever that's called. FFmpeg, so that goes there. And then final output path goes here. Format. So this is final output path. And this has a temp on it. Wish it would stay where I wanted it. All right, so real quick, we'll do this, this, this. Make sure that's passing. And then what's this called? MP3, FFmpeg, command. So this fails, because this isn't here. FFmpeg command. So now it'll pass because it exists. But when we assign it, it fails. Then we hard code it. Passes. Yes, there we go. And now we got to do is fill these things in. Ah, oh, look at this. We might actually have some of these already. Um, for example, here is temp 
output file path. See, this is more how it should go. <laughs> Self, temp output file path. MP3 file. Self MP3 path. Final output path. Is that all going to pass? No. Because I did self that self. Let's try it without that. Oh, come on. It's supposed to work. String object is not callable. What? Ah, uh, how about this? Better? Passing. So that's our command. And so now... Uh, where's the assemble videos thing? Make videos. If I make a command. FFmpeg command down there. It sure did. That looks pretty good. All right, so now this should work. Except invalid data found when processing input. Oh, come on. Why is that? Oh, there's no nothing in it. Why is there nothing in it? Where did we put the other one? Users. Oh, 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 I know what's happening. So yeah, when I'm testing it, I delete that file and then I just touch it to make it exist. So OS system. Let's just run it and see what happens. Let's go all the way to main. Let's just fire it up, see what happens. That's a good sign. I don't know where it's going. So I think this is going into smoke test. I'll delete this real quick. Because I think we're using these smoke test clip videos. Yeah, I think this is all smoke test stuff. Transcoding, making progress.
There it is. Hyperspeed temp. This is going to be cool if this works. Because I'll now have separation of concerns between the download, the clipping, and the assembly. Um, and that's pretty slick. And this is ridiculous. Like, I don't, whatever, this whole project's ridiculous. That's just cool to see it go, though. So this is doing the concat. Yeah, the other thing that I want to do, so if I get this working, or when I get this working, there's another thing you can do with a concat thing where you can give different transitions um, instead of just the fade that we're doing. Uh, and I think this is FFmpeg. No! Blowed up, sir. All right, but there's... Wait a minute, did it make it? ridiculous how did it so what's it complaining about here mp3 has no oh that's some artifact from thing wow that made it fast when it did the final thing when it did the ffmpeg i didn't even see it click Tell me which line it's on. Line 31 in simple videos. Line 31. Thirty-one. No. What's going on? NASA assembler. Line 31. Oh, here we go. Oh yeah. Make sure to do make sure you delete this. And I didn't delete it, and then it exploded. We don't need that. All right, so let's add one more MP3 as a test. And let's point it at a couple different directories. Aya. So where are my directories, my real directories? Desktop, NASA videos video clips. So clips directory is here. Let's do this dev. Since you can't really comment JSONs. Dev. I want to do this, 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 this. I was smart. I would have copied them before putting in the devs, because now I got to delete the devs, but that's okay. So clip root is here. Output root. NASA video is assembled, which I think it's going to make that directory. And then MP3 root. Let's grab a couple MP3s. Let's do, I don't know, three of them. Let's 
One, two, three. Uh, where's the desktop? NASA MP3s. Put those in there. Pi. So this is going to be desktop. NASA MP3s. So symbols, video clips. I like that in a better order. All right, let's come back to main. Try it. Oh, exploded. You already did a logo? You were very fast at that. I would not be that fast at that. Oh, come on. It's an off by one error, I'm sure, right? So this is looping, this is in the MP3 file. Looping through Pick scene one. So time left. Scene total scenes is zero. Total scenes is nineteen. Oh. Total scenes is zero. Total scene should be one. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, I know what's happening here. This one is the giant one. Okay, this is a bug. It's okay, bugs happen. OB. This is, nope. Okay, I am wrong. Oh, it's gonna be the next one, I'll bet. Clip duration. Two, three, five, time left. Total scenes, zero. Hmm, that doesn't make sense. Time left, total scenes. Oh, oh, okay, okay, it does make sense because we're starting up here. So, countdown, list. Countdown times. I know it's happening. So it's going to be this one. So scenes count, I guess really just would be. That's not right. Oh, so it's uh, pandas is doing something different with it. I think I know what's going on. So there's no There's no first line. Pandas is skipping that. So that two count that I do is making this look like there's zero in there. So I'm gonna punt. If scene count is zero, continue. Just don't don't even worry about it. Just go on. And that'll also help because that means if anything's like a, just a giant scene, I won't mess with it. So that's good. I like this.
Oh, did it cook? Did it close it down? That's no good, man. Also, don't burn yourself. Cook your, uh, cook your parts. Not good for you. So, what's I gonna do? Looks like it's gonna make progress. That's what it's gonna do. All right, so there's concat. So where we're we going? We're going to desktop. Oh, I didn't make the directory. Uh, wonder if that's gonna be a problem. I'm gonna find out real quick if I don't get to it. Eh, we'll see what happens. Could you cook your bed sheets? Yeah. Well, people used to do that when it was cold out, right? You get a, they do the thing where they, what do they call it? Like a warming pa pad or something, a warming pan. They'd put it in the fire for a while and then warm their beds with it. Modern day version of doing that. And of course you could just, you know, get an electric blanket too. Which are, I don't even know if electric blankets are still a thing. I have not seen one in quite some time. Of course, I live in Florida, so it's not that I would have. All right, it's a running. Yeah, I'm actually, oh, actually, no, I really should have the directory there because I don't know if this is gonna build it or not. Uh, it's gonna suck if it doesn't work. There we go. Actually, I don't know where it's doing stuff right now because it's like making stuff. Actually, to be honest, I don't know what it's doing because it hits that rendering phase and then the transcoding phase. So I don't know what this is actually doing. Yeah, see, render. And then it bumps the transcode. And I want to keep an eye on this and see how fast that last uh, that last segment goes. Where it uh... yeah, so here's transcode, which I also wonder if there's stuff. What? Well, the the process has to happen anywhere, so it probably is fine happening on the clips. I was gonna say I was wondering if I could do stuff when I'm splitting the clips that would make it go faster here. But like I only use one out of every thousand clips, so it doesn't make a lot of sense to try and optimize it that front end. Just take a little bit longer on the back end for each individual clip, but overall way less power. I don't think they had you in the bed while they were warming it. I think they did that before you got in the bed. Um, nope, that would be cooking stuff. Bed warmer. That's what I'm thinking about. Yeah, you'd put like coals or something in it and like heat up your bed before you got in it. Use it with a handle, something with a metal frying pan. With a pan would be filled with embers and placed under the cover beds to warm it or dry it before use. Okay, yeah, so if it got cold. Right. Besides the risk of fire. It was recognized that the fumes from the embers were noxious. Yeah, so it's, it's not really a good thing. You don't want to do that. Let's see what you got. Oh. That's kind of cool. I have no design skills. I can design, like lines on things like I can design leaderboards but that's about it because it's just like a whole bunch of lines but like trying to like stuff not so much not so much 
Uh, all right. Let's see if we can actually see it fly by this time. As we pause and have a drink. This is cool. I, this has been, I've been working on this for a little while, right? So seeing it go. And also the fact that it's like going, I'm going to say smoothly in terms of like the different parts, all kind of like the other parts are already going after. Well, so I had the problem where it wouldn't download a 20 gig file. So I had to like write some more code or find some more code to put in there to make that go. Okay. See how fast it goes. So it's got it. It's running it. Oh, okay. So it, it did take some time. Oh, no, that's already onto the second one. That FFmpeg command goes fast. Oh, I should clean up the, the temp file, but... It's working. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Almost as ridiculous as that chicken. So I need to remove... temp file just to clean up why is that orange there it goes that's cool that chicken's awesome yeah so like we've seen the same scene a half dozen times now right uh, it'll click through and get there Oh, right on. Yep. Yeah, chicken. See, like I'm, I've got a whole bunch of random videos, but I like I'm keeping, especially like that clip right there where the chicken just comes up. Like that's a gif, is what that is. Which one is it? Let's do this one. No, maybe not. I don't see the chicken in that one. Let's do this one. School will make it easier to find. Oh, not quite. That's the scene I want right there. I hope it's its own split. It'd suck if it's in the middle of something else. Here, start at the back and go down. I feel like it's going to be towards the end of the... That didn't work. Oh, I should put something in so if it's less than a second... Oh, I think I just saw the end of it right there. Is this gonna be it? I think like I looked at this one already. Boop, 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 boop. Somewhere around here, there's a chicken. I will find the chicken.
Give me a chicken. Oh, that's close. Yeah, I need to put code in. So if it's less than a second, it skips. Which hopefully I'll remember to do that instead of playing with a chicken. It's gonna suck if it's not, if it's... Well, I can still, actually, no, it's, I can still find it. Whatever. I just hope it's its own scene. But it sure isn't looking like it. Nope. Almost out. Let's close. Wait. <clears throat> so I started at the wrong end. Third one. Okay, yeah. All right, let's go put in... So, so the first thing let's do is let's commit what we got right now. Uh, let's take that out for right now. So in MP3 file, if duration, if clip duration is that, or if clip duration is less than, let's say three seconds. Now let's bump this up to 12. Because I want some variation in the length. Three seconds is about right. That's probably right. 12 seconds. Yeah, that's all right. 11. I just don't want it to be too long. 10. We'll leave it at 10. So that'll that'll keep... There's, so a few of those videos, right, have... Like one of these around here somewhere... No, it's 10 seconds. So, okay, three megs, 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 megs. Yeah, 471 kilobytes. So this is, it'll prevent that from showing up. That's cool. Prevent clips shorter than three seconds from showing up. All right, assembled. Yep, okay, let's make it a new one. There we go. Yeah, so I'm just gonna leave this thing running and just have it churn and chew up power. Yeah, it's kind of a bummer the way that I've got it set up. And I, I could hack through it and have two different processes, one that's going through the scenes and the other one that's actually doing the clips. Um, but I, I don't wanna do that because I don't wanna risk, like I know that the way that I have it right now works and I've kind of also just want to let, let it run so like I need I just need to have be patient with it I'm not going to download any more files though right now until that process is caught up um, just because it's if I download more files it will take even longer before I actually get to the clips and have the thing going so um, yeah see there to there oh yeah finished wait I thought I had three Why didn't it do three? Now I'm confused. Always remember another breath. Oh, you know what? I'll bet that directory didn't exist. 
and it just skipped it. That may have been out right there. Scene list. Oh, I may I run out of history, so it may be farther back. I'll bet that's what happened though. Clips. FFM yeah, so there's the create of which one? Which one's this making? This is always remember and never forget. So this is it trying to make it. All right, so here's the assembly command. the render boom yep no it's a trial directory that's what I thought might have happened so other thing to add is make the output dir uh, output dir output dir output dir so we should do that at the assembler level. It's funny, this one doesn't do much, right? Just fires up, calls it. Oh, actually, no, let's do it at the MP3 file level, because that's actually where it needs to have the thing. So concat command, duration, and we should put this into the make videos. Do I already have path? I do. Look at that. Path output root. Make their uh, parents true. Exist okay, true. I think that works. Actually, I'm gonna try that. I just wanna watch another one of these. Oh yeah, so this'll be... These are gonna be so weird. Clearing browser cache. Yuck. The uh, do you ever use the private browser mode to do that so you don't have to deal with cache? Just like fire up a, the private browser window or whatever. It theoretically most of the time it makes the you not have to deal with cache. Sometimes you gotta like quit out or do whatever, but that's sometimes an easy way to look at that. Okay, so I'm actually gonna kill this. And so the two things I want to check on this run are um, oops. Close that. Yeah, the two things to check on this run. So one, I'm gonna drop a, I'm gonna bang out one more file, or remove one file. 
So that one worked last time. Cool. And this 11 and this 22 can go for right now. This download test can go. So what should happen is it should make the directory. Whoops, which I need to wait. That just it already just made it, right? Or did I make it? Delete it. There we go. Um, whoops. So it's gone. Files are gone. So it should make that directory, which it just did. Okay. So that's like one of the first things that happened. So it calls the MP4 file, MP3 file. And the first thing it really does is calls the command to make the video. The first thing that happens in there is it makes this directory um, if it doesn't exist. And so this will put all the FFmpeg concat stuff in there but it should delete those temp files. I think I told it to delete the temp files. Make video, remove temp output path. Yep, okay. Yeah, login buttons there, all right. Unspecified error. Unspecified error? That's not helpful at all. Gotta, gotta have specifics before you can figure out what's going on, right? Local storage set item state parameter random string right on all right So the other trick to do is now I can start messing around with the FFmpeg commands, right? No, you don't have to fade them out. You can just do one or the other. Fade out and fail with both the audio and the video. Okay, so input clip. Oh goodness, whatever that is. Filter complex, fade out, 30. FFmpeg has a SSEOF option that allows one to seek an input from the end. Okay, so you're falling back. We can use this to accomplish our goal. So we feed the input twice with the second time ingesting only the last second. We tell FFmpeg to preserve the timestamps so that it preserves the temporal position of this tail portion. We apply a fade out to this tail and then overlay the result onto the full input. Since they're the same media file, the foreground completely covers the background. And since copy TS was applied, the overlay happens on the corresponding identical frame in the background input. Okay. For audio, we could a blank dummy of two seconds and crossfade into it.
Hmm. Clip. See, the question is, can I apply this in my transitions? Oh, crap. You know what? I should have saved. Oh, I can just I can just keep working on the same one. That's fine. Um, that won't matter. Like, it's the same the same file running down. Android recovery. That doesn't sound good. All cool. This one's warbly. I don't like it. I should have taken it out of rotation. But someday I will be able to make playlists out of these same songs on YouTube with NASA videos, which is kind of the point of all this mess. Today's Monday, right? I kind of lost today yesterday. Come on, transcode. Is this is the first one or the second one. This would be the second one. Cool. Oh, see, this actually already has a fade in. All right, so hang on, let me find. Clip out part of a video, that's what we wanna do. Starts at one minute, 32 seconds. Copies eight seconds via T. Okay, yeah, so let's just do this. I wanna get Copy this one for a second. You know, it'd be awesome. Oh, you can copy the path. Oh, wait, holy cow. Okay. I didn't know you could do that. That's really awesome. You can just copy a file and paste it into iTerm and it gives you the path. That's really cool. That's really cool. Uh, I think the chicken has the highest likelihood of going viral. I'm going to make that a GIF, and I think like if I can make that a meme that happens, that would be awesome. I, I mean, I wouldn't make it a meme. The world would make it a meme, but like I think it's got potential as a GIF, but then also just as a straight shot with a chicken hanging out. So FFmpeg, I always remember start, am I getting this right? So I think you can just do start zero T, well T10, doesn't matter, uh, T20, we'll give it 20 seconds. And then output, right? Yeah which we're going to call source.mp4. So that should happen pretty quick. Invalid frame size zero. Okay. Maybe we do a one. Invalid frame size one. Guess you got to do SS. There you go.
See, like, this has taken way longer. Oh, because I'm not using that copy. But that's okay, because you... So, like, the copy thing works off keyframes, and the keyframes get weird sometimes. So, like... This is okay. But, like, wow, this is taking a long time. Oh, I guess the other encoder's going, too. So, like, we're banging on the machine pretty hard. Okay. So now... So how do we fade in alone? Somebody wrote this recently. I love it. Basic fade in and fade out using the fade filter for audio and a fade. Oh, fade filter. For audio, the A fade filter can be used to achieve. Okay, so fade, T, N, ST equals zero. This will start with a black screen and fade in for a full three seconds. This will make the video start fading to black over five seconds at the 10 second mark. So fade in, fade out. Oh, start time equals whatever, and then duration equals, got it, okay. Audio, audio, you can buy. You can apply by the fade in, fade out, setting time to have and forwarding to recode. Yep, okay. And also copy audio. So that's copying audio, video filter. So fade in is what we're looking for. Do it for seven seconds just so we can really see it and fade in dot mp4 and see if this doesn't do it also i'm going to try it with copy in just a second since we're doing the full length of the thing fc start d duration yep that's it have you done ffmpeg stuff before or did you just pick it up faster than me So this should fade in over a few seconds. It didn't work. Fade in, start zero. What if we start at three, go to seven? Just run that. Yes, over eight. Just guessed, right, yeah. Good guesses. I'm, I was guessing too, but since we both guessed the same thing, uh, hopefully that means that we are both right. Um, it makes a tremendous amount of sense. Also, FFmpeg usually makes, a, once you learn what the various parts are, usually it makes sense. Sometimes it's really, like some of the, the commands, right, are like, super complicated to look at but like any of the programming stuff once you kind of like figure out the individual pieces instead of seeing like this giant wash coming at you you can be like oh right so this is copy video channel with this library this is i want a map for the audio right so i don't know what the rest of it is uh open fade okay there you go so it does go, so you probably want to go for, hmm. that didn't work. So 
So one second for one second. I'm going to add Y in there in a minute so it goes in over right. Oh, I got to go in a second. Oh, yeah, I guess I should check and see that finished. And it cleared the directory for me. Okay, cool. Yeah, so it made it and it cleared it. That's it. Now it's just a matter of figuring out if I want to add more effects to it. Um, but that's up and running. Which is awesome. Open, fade in. Let's see what this does. Oops, it's already open. Go away. Take two. Yeah, see, that's better. Can you do a point? Yes, I still want to overwrite it. Almost done. Yeah, so like the, the thing's done. I can run it like that and it's fine. But now it's just, I want to look at the videos. I want to, I'll test some of the video outputs and see how they look. So I want to add this fade in and I'll probably add a little bit of a fade out. Um, I'll have to test a couple and see if I like it with the audio tracks. Like if I want to fade into the audio or just have them hit. Um, and then I want to, I'll play around with those transitions, the other possibilities for transitions and see about doing that. Um, whoops. Let's see what this looks like. That's pretty good. Yeah, start at 30. So you want a little bit of the actual black screen before it actually kicks in. I may add another tenth of a second. Nah, that's fine. Um, but yeah, I'm in, that's in good shape. That's exactly right. Yeah, so I'm I'm assembling all these clips and and pulling it in and like the full thing is basically automated now. So it goes and gets the clip. It goes and gets full videos, cuts them in pieces, randomly reassembles them and then puts the music on top of them. Um and it's going to do I'm going to do that for the entire Yahoo library, not Yahoo. <laughs> Yahoo. Are they still around? Um YouTube library. So they've got a free audio library. And I'm just going to put all the songs out there. Um, with videos underneath them, just because, why not? And I want to play around with them, so that'll give me something to test. But that is for another day. In the meantime, I'm going to head out. So have a good one. We'll, I'll show you some videos next time this thing's up because it's. Uh, uh, I just got to set them up and let them run, basically. So cool. See you, dude. Have a good one. Later.